Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Everything House Music and More. And my special guest today is a Chicago legend himself, Mr. Frederick Dunson. Freddie, how you doing, sir? Legend? Hmm, oh, okay. Yeah. In the industry. Thank, 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 <laughs> thank you for that compliment. It's my privilege. And How you been, Freddie? I'm good. I'm All good. Right, so, uh, you ready to get into it? Yeah. Uh, let's, 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 let's get into it. Let's, yeah, let's, let's get into go. it. So, Freddie, okay. for our viewers who aren't aware of Frederick Dunson, tell them who you are and what do you do as it relates to house music. Oh, wow. Okay. My name is Frederick Dunson, and I am the president and one of the founding members and executive director to the Frankie Knuckles Foundation, which is a 501c3 non-for-profit dedicated to the honor and legacy of keeping the legacy of um, my dear friend, Frankie Knuckles, alive and um, advocating some of the causes he was passionate about. Uh, music in school, LGBTQIA, youth homelessness, um, AIDS awareness and prevention, and uh, diabetes, which he suffered from. Okay, wonderful. So also, you know, you'd be, along with the Frankie Nuggles Association, where are you from, Freddie, and what's your history? Oh, wow. Okay, um, so born and bred on the west side. West side. Uh, and... Um, Grew up here in Chicago. Okay. Uh, and so w when I was in my teens, I discovered house music. Or now, I, let me take that back. Okay. I discovered music. Okay. Now, okay. what year was this? 75. 75, okay. 1975, okay. 75, 76, yeah. Yeah, about sophomore year. Yeah. Okay, all right. So um, I, I began to love music that I, I, I call dance music. So okay. I... I I have a thing where I just group it all together. Yes. Now people will say disco and they will say garage. It, yeah. I lump it all together and say it's dance music because what? It makes you dance. Okay. Okay. Simple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what was Chicago black gay party scene like that before the warehouse? So uh, before the warehouse, there were gay bars that existed in Chicago, black gay bars. Okay. So people were going there. There wasn't an after hour party scene like the warehouse. Okay. Um, so there were bars, there were bars on the south side. Um, there were the white bars on the north side. Right. And um, that's where kids went. Okay. Or I should I say kids, but that's where we went. Right. Right. And and so you had like the A and P, Martin's Den over on Fifty Fifth and State, okay. uh, the A and P over on Cottage Grove, mm. um, and of course there was Jeffrey Pub, okay, over on on uh, Jeffrey. Right now, do you remember some of the DJs that was spinning at this time at those places? Um, yes. So you had uh, Michael Ezebuku, right. uh, who I went to high school with. He graduated the year before me. Okay. Hey, Michael. <laughs> um, and you had Gene White. Okay. You had Ralph White. Um, you had Charles Perkins. Um, there were other people doing other things. Okay. Um, there was this guy, Lee. I can't think of Lee's last name. Okay. So you, you, there, there were guys that was playing records. Right, right. Yeah. So did you attend the warehouse? And if so, how did you discover it? Oh, wow. Um, I had a brother, rest his soul, who went to Lewis University. He went away to school, and he somehow... There was a group of us on the West Side okay. that all, uh, we, we just all kind of gravitated each other. And my brother had a friend in high school. And then I had a cousin that taught at St. Joseph's out in Westchester okay. uh, who had a student. Uh, and, and so we were all gay. Right. Um, and we just kind of all hung out together, uh, with the exception of my cousin, because he was older than the rest of us. Okay. And so my brother went away to school came back from school one time and was talking about some people he met at Lewis who was going to a place called The Warehouse. Okay. Little did he know that I was going out to bars like I was going to the A&P yeah. and I was going to our den before it became DN1. Okay. Um, and Martin's uh, Martin's den. You know, he, he didn't know about any of that. And so 
he said, well, we're going to go to the warehouse. Yeah. So before we did that, we went to a after hours club called the Bowery, which turned out to be people who had organized the warehouse, but had branched out and did something on their own. Right. That's actually where I met Frankie at was that one night at the Bowery. Oh, okay. Uh, a friend of mine um, who's in D.C., I hope he's still playing records. Hey, Kurt. <laughs> uh, Kurt said, do you know who that is? And I was like, mm-hmm. and so we kind of went over to him because he was kind of off to himself shy. Right. And we became friends. We befriended him. Okay. And um, the next thing, no, that, 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 that in reverse, we ended up going to the warehouse one night, and then Frankie moved here. Okay. And then we met Frankie at the Bowery. Mm. Um, yeah, I went to the warehouse first. The warehouse then was across the street from where its last iteration was on Jefferson. It was at 555 West Adams, which is now Kent Law School. Uh-huh. It was upstairs. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, took the elevator up. It was an old kind of, I won't say it was rickety, but, you know, it was an old, it was, yeah. it, it was, a, it was an old office building. Okay. And I walked out into this room. Uh, Greg Winfield's brother was working the door that night, Benny. Benny. Right. Yeah, b- yeah. Bless, bless his heart. Yeah. And so uh, we got in. Because it was a membership club, so you had to know somebody. Okay. And I don't remember how we actually got in that night, but somebody got us in. Okay. And so um, it was just this huge cavernous space. It was kind of dark. Okay. And the DJ that night was Craig Cannon. Oh, wow. And so um, there was a fruit bar to the right, okay. but there was all this space, and there was parachutes and... Okay. Um, so that's how I ended up there. Ah, so what was your relationship with Frankie like also? Um, Frankie and I kind of hit it off really right off. Uh, like I said, Kirk introduced us. He, um, at that time, Frankie would, during the week, he would get the invitations together or the mailings, the postcards, the invitations together, pluggers, the invitations to the weekend, the upcoming weekend out. And we started going to help him volunteering by helping him do the mail, putting the labels and uh, and the stamps on. And then we became fast friends. Okay. And then when did you start working at the warehouse? Shortly thereafter, um... Uh, Frankie, for some reason, I don't know. I don't remember how that conversation came about. Okay. But uh, me and a friend of mine, Clois, um, we started doing the fruit bar because mm-hmm. there was fruit bar. Right. We started working on the fruit bar, and then we started fixing food. Okay. Y- 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 you know, um, a-, a lot of people don't know that, that there were some very lavish parties at the warehouse. Yeah. One night we did Thanksgiving dinner, a, okay. a, a total of four Thanksgiving dinner. Oh wow! Um, one night we did a tribute to Harlem, where we had it was New Year's Eve. We did champagne and rib tips okay. uh, from Rib Supreme. So I'm <laughs> I'm telling you how old I am by saying, um, I mean, it was just the things that we did that that yes. a lot of thought went into what was going on. Now there was rumor that there was drugs inside the fruit trays and everything. Is that true? I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you should say that because yesterday, uh-huh. uh, someone we know in common told me about a story he he heard right. that when there when over the punch there would be one light, right. and whenever the one light was hanging, that meant that it was spiked. Wow. That is just so ludicrous and stupid. Look at the rumors. The ru- <laughs> uh, well, it, it's sort of like a program I watched yesterday right. where there was this guy talking about. He went to the warehouse, right. and there, there was this line outside. And I, I never recalled a line ever being outside the warehouse really? because, oh God, the line was always on the inside of the stairwell mm. because Robert didn't want the police knowing what was going, going on. on. So people, he would always have, tell people to get in, the, you know, line up in the right, hall. Right. I'm not saying there wasn't a line to get in. Right. I'm just saying that there wasn't a line outside. So when people say that, I just go, mm, I, I never saw it. And then this guy went on to say, 
that there was a bar upstairs and I'm like, oh, well, I, I don't know where he was, right. but there was no bar at 206 South Jefferson on the on the main floor, on okay. the third floor, which is the floor you came into. Okay. The bar was downstairs on the dance floor at one point and then it moved in the basement. Wow. I should know because I worked the bar and then I ended up managing the club and being the membership Ooh, secretary. Tell. So, <laughs> it, Get your facts right, people. If you go tell the story, so tell it right. Who this, is it, who this person is? Who this person? I, is? I don't know who this who this person was. Okay. I, 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 all I can say to him is, baby, you having a memory lapse and you need to get it right. <laughs> okay. So Frankie is credited. So I hope that answered okay. your question about the punch and the fruit. Oh, it did. Yeah. It did. Yes, okay. absolutely. You, okay. you thoroughly it, 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 It's all him. folklore to me. I don't know anything okay. about it. All right. I'm just saying you was in charge of it, so, so I asked my That's what I'm saying. Okay. Hear right. me, boo. <laughs> so Frankie is credited with so much regarding house music in the early days. Do you feel he was aware of his influence outside the walls of the warehouse? Okay. So I, I'm going to cover a couple of things here because it, okay. it seems that people say that I only talk about Frankie. But why else would I not talk about Frankie when I'm president of the Frankie Knuckles Foundation Absolutely. and I represent that brand? Okay. That, yeah. There were other people doing other things. Okay. Other people are playing other other music in other cities, even here in Chicago. Right. Some of the guys that I mentioned earlier, they were playing records. Yes. So I I think to answer your question, he didn't know that he was that sort of influence. Okay. Um I think he would probably say, Really? Yeah. That would probably be his response. Like, <laughs> what? <"Really?" laughs> right. Yeah. So. Okay. So, do you feel any weight in being asked to speak on behalf of Frankie and represent his feelings on the history of house music? I I, I don't feel uh, uh, it's a weight. I just feel that if it's if you're gonna tell the story, be authentic and be correct, mm -hmm. and be accurate. Right. That's that's most important. I think I think that's the problem we having right now with uh, the culture. Uh, 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 people hear what they want to hear, and and some people just don't know uh, to uh, to uh, um, to understand and to process what they hear. Right. They hear what they want to hear because right. they feel that what they wanted to feel. Um, uh, a perfect example, and I, I hope this is maybe a segue into what you wanted to talk about, okay. was an interview that appeared on Fox TV this week okay. where, it, it, and you have the interview if you want to play the, what I said, you can play it. Because that music came out of black gay parties, black gay gathering. That was the music that we were listening to and we were playing. I, I didn't say we developed it, so all of those people that, that are reading more into it than what I just said, hear what I just said. We were playing it, we were listening to it. I didn't say we developed it. I said, I we were listening to. It got turned all around saying that I said we developed it. I said it twice. Right. So you hear what you want to hear, but I know what I said and, and what was recorded. Right. I'm, I'm going to play it on, right on this clip right here and then... That's, that's what everybody's going to listen to. So, you know, if, if you heard anything else in that, that's on you. Right. I said what I said. Okay, well, that was one of my questions because a lot of people was complaining about that, Freddie. Well, they, they can complain, but they, they didn't hear. They didn't right. listen. And that's the problem with people. They don't listen. They hear what they want to hear because I didn't say that. Okay. So you can't put words in my mouth that I didn't say. Okay, all right. So you probably heard many versions of this story. Where do you feel house music gets its name from? And I'm asking you because you you were close to Frankie, and you yourself he didn't he didn't sit up and develop it. So okay, so that, that was one of my questions. Do you yeah. feel like Frankie created house oh, music? Oh no 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 no! And he would never say that. Right. And, and you asked me that question at. Um, Terry's panel recently Correct. and I said to you I said to the audience that's one thing he would never credit himself with Correct. he would never say he developed it he would never say that he was the godfather he would never say that it, it's because of him no, because yeah. there were other people in other cities again doing things. Right. David was doing. David was playing. Louis was playing. Right. Ted was playing. Yeah. Tony Humphreys was playing. T was playing. Right. Um, so many other people were playing, doing the same thing, uh, and and Larry was still playing. Right. So how, how can 
you all playing the same thing. How could you accredit yourself with being that? Yeah. And anybody who ever said they heard him say that, they are a lie. Right. Okay. They're a fucking lie. Okay. Mm. But let's go back and see where do you think the name House Music came from? Um or derived from. I I I I I, I, I my opinion. Yes, this is your opinion. My opinion and my opinion. Yes. Only right. is it because of the um the after hour environments here in Chicago that that music was played at. Okay. And what was it played at? There were a number of after yeah. hour because even though the warehouse existed, there were people who still had their spaces. Lonnie, I, you, you probably don't even know who Lonnie Fuller was. Mm -hmm. Lonnie Fuller had a space. Right. I mean, th there were people doing other things. Yeah. Um, so you don't think that that they they everybody shortened it from the warehouse to saying like that's where Frank, Frankie was playing all this music at. Well, th that that's that's one train of thought, but then I don't want to say that because then I'll be accused of saying that I said <laughs> motherfuckers your, need to listen. This, this clean your ears, where, clean your ears out. This is a podcast where you can be free, you oh, can be oh, yourself. Oh, oh, oh. Well, and, and you can speak I'm grown. Yeah. I'm grown, and I don't have to bite my tongue to nobody. <laughs> All right. So, do you believe Frankie' legacy matters? Oh, absolutely. I believe anybody who you know. Um, the the list of guys that I, I mentioned, they all matter, yeah. especially because some of them were good friends of mine. Right. So um, Frankie just happened to be the person that all the notoriety came to. Yeah. And so for those people who always say, well, why does he always talk about Frankie? Why does he always talk about who else am I supposed to talk about? Again, yeah. it's the Frankie Knuckles Foundation. Right, right, right. Exactly. You, you know what I mean? If... X, Y, and Z person has has somebody who wants to talk about them, then let that person do what they need to do. But l this is how journalism and this is how reporting works. Yeah. A reporter contacts you, right. gives you a question, tells you what they want to talk to you about, right. and that's what you talk about. You do not steer them to, uh, well, let's steer it to front. Because in most times, they're going to call, when they call about Chicago, they're going to want to talk about Chicago house music. Correct. And of course, the conversation is going to go to the warehouse Correct. and Frankie. Yes. I mean, it, that's all, all, all do right because that's where the spotlight came from, and that's... That's the but, history of it. But, but these are people who, as you tell me, have a, a, a issue. So for yeah. you motherfuckers that have an issue, get right. over it. Ooh. I don't care. <laughs> Frankie. Oh, Freddie's just speaking the truth today. Well, I, hey, truth hurts. <laughs> it's an ugly thing and it hurts. So, so now, I mean, I, I, I feel this and, and I, I, I was saying this before. I felt like after Frankie had passed, a lot of people who says they were hanging around they were good friends um and i don't think that was true i mean what do you feel about that because i heard some people were like yeah me and frankie was like oh frankie was my favorite and i'm like you didn't say that before i mean i i seen interviews where they said somebody else but now they all of a sudden it's like okay yeah frankie was you the one i looked up to and i was you know it's interesting so Buckle your seatbelts, because th this is going to take you for okay. a minute. Okay, let's go. Okay. It's interesting that people say that. And I've had people walk up to me, before, and I'm like, I certainly did not know all of the people he knew. There is no way I'm going to sit here and Correct. say that. I knew people, I, I knew most of the people that were important in his life, here, there, everywhere. Right. Um, either my name or in, I'll give you a perfect example. I knew Eric Cupper. Uh, virtually, before I met him in person. Okay. We happened to be, Frank, he was playing at Cielo one night, and w w we're in the booth, and Eric's standing next to me, and we're talking. Right. And then all of a sudden, I look at Frank, I'm like, right. he goes, you don't know Eric? <laughs> Eric and I had talked on the phone. Right. We had sent emails to each other. Yeah. Uh, but I had never met him in person. Right. So... Uh, it, 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 you know, it, it, it's funny um, when people say that they did this, they did that. And I go, huh? And then they start describing things and yeah. I go, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> now, I, I, I was not with Frankie 24 7. Correct. But, but I pretty much could say what he would and would not 
be doing or yes. and, and so when people say that I go okay they want to make themselves relevant mm. it, it, it's sort of like the people who because they're his friends yeah. feel that they're entitled to his legacy right and it, he was very specific, unfortunately, about, I should say unfortunate in, in one sense, but fortunate in another sense. He, th- there were directives, let's just say yeah, that. Yeah. And I'm only doing what the directives told me to do. Okay. So as I said to somebody else who was very close to him and didn't like what I said, I'm right. going to say it again. If you don't like it, then contact him and have a conversation with him about it. And when you have that conversation, tell him to call me because I've got a couple of things I need to say. Right, right, right. So can you tell us who is all a part of the Frankie Knuckles Foundation, please? Um, I am the president. Well, when, when it started out in 2014, okay. it was um, myself, the late Randy Crumpton, okay. Judy Weinstein, and we we were the I was president, they were the co directors, I was director, co director. Okay. One of the other founding members was Joe Shanahan and um David Morales. Okay. Okay. And so Joe is it had Joe came in as president of the advisory committee, which he's still the president of the advisory committee. Okay. Um the current members, current roster list of uh, is Eric Cupper. Uh, Reverend Roderick Norton, Stephanie Gaines, James Ramos, Robin Robinson, who used to be on Fox, Mm -hmm. um, John Oppenheimer, and there are two other members, Maria and, um, God, I can't think of his name. (laughs) He works in trouble for that now. I, oh, well, well, but, but, um, what was that? I'm trying to think of his name. Okay. We'll, we'll come back. If you come back, just go ahead and say it. Mm-hmm. So if Frankie was here for the 40th anniversary of the first house music record release, how do you think he would contribute to getting the history right, Freddie? I, I, I think he would. Have a conversation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. I think he would have a conversation, pretty much like you and I. Okay. And, and talk about who did what, then what. It, it, he, here's the other thing that 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 kind of um, concerns me. I don't want to say it distresses me. It concerns okay. me. Okay. And it only happens here in Chicago that everybody is who did what first. Right. It's sort of like Ted Patterson said to me a couple of years ago. Was it last year? He may have said it. Okay. And it made sense. Um, he said, you, you, you know, you kids in Chicago. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> he said, who did what first? It's so, such a big issue. And I said, yeah. I said, and, and, and after he got through with his statement, it, it, I, I, I digested it. But he said, it, who cares who did what first, long as it happened. Right. Be glad that it happened. Yes. And you heard me at Terry's yes. thing said, you, you know, it, it, it's so embarrassing. Yes. It really is embarrassing because, of course, when uh, overseas uh, journalists call. That's one of the things that they they bring up. I mean, it's so embarrassing. Yes. Who did what first? Who cares? As long as it was done, right? And it, it's that's, let's just celebrate right. that. And that it's it, still going. And it's still going. Right. And that it happened. Let's just right. be happy about that. Yeah. Come on, everybody. Let's you, you know. Let's be adults here. Right. We we got to get into something else because okay. you mentioned it. Or, or, okay. You, well, come on. Let's do it. You you, you t- mentioned Joe Shanahan. Yes. And why people feel Joe, that Joe has to be in everything. First of all, Joe was at the warehouse. Right. That's a fact. That's nothing that they can change. If they're mad about that, be mad at time because that's what happened. Okay. The other thing is Joe's Club, Smart Bar, is one of the few venues here in the city of Chicago that you could go to that you're going to hear current music and that you hear world-class DJs. Mm. And it's not some rat-infested place over uh, in some obscure uh, block, right. it's a club that's clean. It's in a decent building. Um, and the other thing is, Joe has supported Frankie for over 
30 some years when Smart Bar opened, Frankie was the first DJ there. Right. Um, Frankie maintained a, re- a residency there. Joe has been such a faithful and um, important supporter right. of the Frankie Knuckles Foundation. He puts his money where his mouth is. Right. Every year if there's a birthday party there, even before the foundation started doing it as a birthday party, he was giving right. parties there. Um so don't knock it unless you have a venue that you want to give up and you want to offer the services that Joe Shanahan does. Right. I think that we was talking about that because that was part of the, the Fox uh, uh, interview that they had with you guys. Well, well, who else did they? Who else did they want to talk to? They interviewed Robert. Right. They interviewed me. Right. We're basically. And when it comes to the people that worked at the warehouse, yeah. there, there's some other people that are still around. But again, people yeah. don't understand how press works. Yeah. They call you. Right. They have an agenda Correct. where they tell you, this is what we want to talk about. So who who are they supposed to go talk to? <laughs> little, little Billy Jean on the corner <laughs> of 69th and Parnell? I mean, are they supposed to just grab people out? They're, they're trying to tell a story. Right. So it, 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 and to that point, if you got a story you want to tell, you got a podcast, have right. them on your podcast and let them tell it to you. Right. Because I don't really give a fuck to hear about it. Right. I, I was there. I ain't got to make up lies that I was there oh, and what happened. I was there. I heard that, Freddie. So, you know, oh, good so, luck. So, so I do have a question. You, you, you and Frankie was tight for such a long time. Did Frankie ever tell you who were some of his favorite DJs he liked to listen to? Oh, you're not gonna get me in that trap. Uh, uh-uh, uh, that's not a trap. I mean, every DJ there, has somebody. There are a like number of people that he liked. Okay, so I mean, let the audience. But, but, but if I forget somebody, somebody's gonna get offended. Okay, so let's I, put it I, out so, there. No, as... no, 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 no. I, people do that all the time, and and I start naming DJs, and I forget somebody, just like I forgot the my board member's name, because right. he may not be a board member <laughs> anymore. But anyway, uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't think people are gonna hold you to it. I just no, want to know. Well, no. I mean, some people look, would like to look, know. Look, play the clip, and you'll hear what I had to say, and then you it, it'll be the same thing. Well, he said. No, no, I'm no, not no, going to no, do no. that. I, I'm, I'm not, gonna I'm do not that. trying to put you on the spot, Freddie. But I'm you just, are. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to have people be like, who did Frankie like to listen to? He liked to listen to a number of people. Okay, can, okay, give me two. Now, I know they may be, it may be more, but give me two people so people would be like, wow, Frankie listened to these people. I'll give you three. Okay, right off the top three. of my head. David Morales, yes. um, uh, David Harness and Ted Patterson. Wonderful. Um, uh, um, oh, God. Boom, boom. Uh, Manny. Manny. Okay. Manny. I can't think of Manny's last name. Th- th- those were people that I know he listened to on nice. a regular basis. See, that's what, I mean, it's just something. Oh, and, and, and of course, Eric Cupper. Okay. Okay, good, good. Okay, so that, that's immediate, <laughs> right? And, and we're not holding that against you. I'm not. Nobody's gonna well, hold shit, that against age. you. Age, you know. Some days I don't remember my name. <laughs> <laughs> no, it yeah. just I want people just in depth because you know, like you said, you you got a lot of rumors out there. You got people saying this and saying that, and I just want to get it from the horse of my which I, is yourself. I, I mean, I, I, I can I can even remember about Ralphie Rosario. Yeah. I, I mean, a number of people I could. I, you, yeah. you, Somebody is going to be offended that Correct. I did not say their name. Right. Yeah, yeah, but we we're not taking it to that. We just well, we just, but I, you're not taking it to that. But but again, <laughs> go back to what how we got to this conversation. I understand, and, and that's what I'm a player. But I wanted you on this show to tell people about the foundation first. And, and, then, and for those who care that they claim they cared and love Frankie yes. so that haven't given a dollar, right. if you choose to do so, you can do so at www.thefkfoundation.org. Again, right. www.thefkfoundation.org. Wow. Now, go ahead. Okay. Shameless plug. <laughs> Shameless plug. So what's in store for the future of the Frankie Knuckles Foundation? I don't know. This year seems to be there. Are a couple of things I can't really talk about that has been very, very exciting. Okay. Um, there is an event coming up in May in Naples that some Chicago DJs will be playing at. Okay. I can't 
say that because I, I just saw the email last night and okay. I'm waiting on them to verify if they, they've been confirmed. Okay. Um, we just had our annual fundraiser, which was Frankie's birthday party. Okay. The coldest night of the year is always the coldest night of the right. year. We need to figure that one out. <laughs> Got to take it somewhere warm, man. Well, but but it, it's it's well supported by Absolutely. the the Smart Bar Metro community. If you saw any of the clips that I posted online, yes, that room was packed. packed. I got there at nine twenty. There was a line in the cold. Right. It stayed that way to like twelve o'clock. Nice. A line. Wow. So you you know um, again, Joe Shanahan. Thank you, Joe. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, you, you know, I, I just kind of want to go back to the Joe thing because that that really bothered me. Okay. Joe is one of the nicest people you could possibly meet. You've right. known him for a number yeah, of years, absolutely. And for people to single him out because he took he participated in the interview, huh? I I, I mean, they act like he went down to Fox and said, "I need to be a part of this." I need to be a part of this. He is revered and people go to him for that information. It's not like, yeah. uh, hello, yeah. this is Joe Shanahan and I want to be a part. No, 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 well, no. Freddie, you know, everybody's, you can't please everybody. I, and I don't try to yeah. anymore. Yeah. I, yeah. I learned that lesson a long time it, it's ago. It's no different from this podcast I'm doing. I get a lot of people like, why didn't you call him? I mean, I'm trying to get everybody. You know, it takes time. And some people and you may like, just not want to talk to. Right. They ain't got shit to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you my story with Frankie. So, so you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I came in the game knowing Frankie through my brother, Xavier. Um, which you you and him are really good friends. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> but um, Hey, Xavier. Hey, boo. <laughs> You know, through him and Feather, they used to go to, um, you know, the warehouse. Hey, Miss Feather. Um, and then, you know, I did a record back in 80, 87. It, it, it started to make me travel. And then it laid up there. And Frankie, when I came, because we used to perform at the Red Zone, the tunnel. And um, I started performing. And Frankie just said, welcome to the industry. Oh and wow! He, and he knew me because of Xavier and everything like that. Because I, I see him in passing, but I thought that was a great honor, mm-hmm. and just it, it meant something to me because it was Frankie David that was spending there at the Red Zone, and when they said that, it just it just lit me up. And then after that, I started doing remixes and production, and he was just like, "I'm so proud of you because I saw where you came from," and that just meant a lot to me because there was somebody that I looked up to. But but that's the yeah. type of person he 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 was. Yeah. Um, if he liked you, yeah. He, you know, it, it was those people that 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 he would, yeah. You know, yeah, get yeah, the yeah. side eye to. Exactly. But but they had to do something to him because, as I tell people, he was not that sort of person to be like. I don't feel like being bothered. Right. Right. And. and there are people that he were friends with that I may not necessarily right. particularly care for. He would he and I'd be like, as long as they serve you, whatever purpose they serve you, fine. Keep them out my way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this: Who is Freddie's DJ? He like to listen to. See now, now you're gonna trap me into that again. I am not. Yeah, give, yeah, give yeah, me yeah. Be, two or three DJs you like Freddie like to listen to. It's not all of them, but just give me your. Top three. Do they have to be local? Absolutely I'll, not. Huh? Any, anybody that is who is this is your truth. And I walk in it each and every day, there heel, you go. heels or not. <laughs> um, one of my favorite DJs is my son, okay, Albert Phillips. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, um, I, people go roll their eyes, and right. but. I, 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 and then another favorite of mine okay. is Zach Jones. Zach Jones. Now, everybody's going to say, who, who? Right. Zach opened up for us, um, FKF, a couple of times. He's he's a anesthesiologist by day. Mm. Uh, but he's got a really great ear. Um, Oscar McMillan. Okay, Oscar, yeah. Um that's all I needed. I just wanted yeah, to see. I, I, yeah. I mean, be, because I'll stop there because okay. there's Ralphie, right? Um, 
Be- because a- anything past that, yeah. people are going to get personal, and all of the all of the international and and other DJ, they're gonna be like, "Oh, the bitch didn't name me." Right. Well, I said I'm gonna keep it local. I'll start small, right. and he stopped me. So that was well, good. We can we can go ahead and, and oh, and, oh and, no and no 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 four four is oh, enough. Four. So that's local. How about international in it or out of state? Now see now, now you being messy. Oh my goodness. You stopped me last time. I'm just trying to get it I, all out of And I'm stopping you. you now because somebody's going to be like, oh, the bitch didn't name me. Well, um, what do the bitch like out of state and overseas? Oh, wow. Um, you can give me one or two names. Um, Ted Patterson, David Harness, and... Uh, Eric Cupper. Okay. And I- anybody who did not get a chance to hear Eric Cupper at uh, Frankie's birthday party, this was the second year he played. Yeah. Eric was, he was over. <laughs> over. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, he, 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 he was like, mm. but at the end of the evening, yeah. I was like, yeah, I I, I couldn't do anything. Thing, right. I couldn't do anything, but right. and so I'm gonna go back to Chicago DJs because there's three that that's go. If I don't mention them, they go really be pissed. Uh-oh. So it's the residents of Queen. <laughs> so it's Michael Serafini. Okay. Hey, Michael. <laughs> uh, the lovely and talented Derek Carter. Okay. And Garrett David, who I just found out has moved abroad to spread his wings. Okay. That kid, and, and and when I say he's kid, he's young. Yeah, he knows music like you and I. Right. I mean, he's a really young guy yeah. that really knows me and can play. Yeah. Oh, Frankie, when well, Frankie first, they would piggyback. Well, they would open on Frankie's. Uh, uh, Frankie would play there in, during his residency. Yeah. And one night, I was like, oh, yes. he was like, isn't he? And Garrett right. Date. Yeah. So Garrett. <laughs> Good luck to you, baby. And he's such a sweetheart. Yeah. That makes a difference. Okay. So I, I can't, I have to include my queen residents okay. because they have been so supportive right. and so kind to FKF for the last 10 years. Okay. No, that's, that's, that's just new right there. Oh, I, look, if, if you can't, I, I'm not going to put you down if I can't lift you up right. unless you deserve, deserve to be put down like a dog. <laughs> so you asked this question about relevancy. Yes. The, 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 you mentioned this a couple of questions ago. So okay. however you edited this in, that's on you. Yeah. People who would not speak or didn't give me the time of day now right. that they know that I run the Frankie, I, I, there's somebody I know who's, his wife and me were good friends. Okay. He found out, he wouldn't speak to me before. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, he saw me and Frankie together at the Chosen Few event one year. Right. And all of a sudden, he decides to speak. Now, he finds out that I'm running the foundation. I, whenever I see him, hey, man, how you? And I'm like. Do we have names? Yeah, we have a name. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, um, he know who he is. Well, I want everybody. I, uh, 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 see, you being messy. I am not. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it goes back to this thing of how people want to cling on to something to be relevant. Okay. Be relevant on your own two feet. Correct. I, 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 I had a personality before I became friends with Frankie. Right. OK, I, I had a, a career while me and Fran, Frankie were friends. Right. Frankie's no longer here. He left me with some things to take care of. Right. So it, it's not I, I'm still who I am and I'm, I'm still the person I was before. Absolutely. That. So people. I it, still, it, we still want the viewers want to know the name. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. Tell the viewers to call me. I'm going to put your number on the screen. Oh, that's why, that's why Verizon offers call filter. Uh, Put my number. Yes. I will tell them. Okay. But, but they, they know who they are. Go ahead and be Uh, Wendy Williams right now. uh Uh-uh. But, and you see how she ended up? Uh, but. Uh, uh, uh. (laughs) 
<laughs> Not the doll. <laughs> okay, so that, that's good that you said that. Yeah, I, I just think, you, you know, you, you mentioned it, and I think it's something that people need to think about just for the, they just want to be um, Manny Ward. That's who it was okay. when I said, boom, oh, boom, one, one, of, your one of the DJ, DJs, yeah. Manny Ward. That's that, uh, Manny, I'm so sorry. I just couldn't think of your last that's name. called Old Timers. Yeah, well, we, forget, we forget about that. Well, well you yeah, know, yeah. I, I, I've had my share at the at the bar, <laughs> you know, and you know, <laughs> and self rolled. Yeah, I've I've had my share there. Um, so you still ain't gonna tell us who the DJ was? Oh, I, I told you who no, the, the DJ one that, was. The one that, He's not a DJ. No, the one that wanted to be your friend now because they didn't like it until they found out. You just he's not a friends. DJ. Oh, oh yes, he DJ. is a DJ. Well, yeah. he calls himself a DJ. He wanted them jack leg DJs. What's jack leg DJ? You, you know, they they think they a DJ, but you know. Oh, ooh. You might as well say the name. No. Man. How you gonna bring that on the show no. and not tell the name? Because I can. Ugh. Give me the initials. D. I don't know what his last initial is. Stage name? I don't even think he got a stage name. Mm. I don't know. I've never heard him play records. Mm-hmm. But when I heard he was a DJ, I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I just read an article about celebrity DJs that my son sent me okay. about um, people who are, are DJs. Little known fact, okay. I played records in high school for two years. So I went to St. Ignatius. Okay. And Ignatius has a, a organization called Black Organization of Students Boss. Okay. So what happened was I had started going to the warehouse. So this had to be after I started going to the warehouse. Right. I would mimic what was happening at the warehouse and take it to our... Right. It, it, it was fun for a while until maybe it was about a year and a half. I think I played two parties. What was your DJ name? Uh, Disco Inc. Disco Inc. Disco Inc. We had little t-shirts. And, oh, okay. You know... We got to bring that back out. Huh? We got to bring that back out. No, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> and, and it was fun until, because, you know, Ignatius was right across the street from the project. Right. And, and until they tried to take one of the turntables one mm. night. And, and you know, Frankie had a big laugh about that. So, it, you know, he's Okay, a, so, since you went there, mm-hmm. name me three of your favorite Chicago house records. Oh, why Chicago? Why can't I just say house records? Oh, you make this so damn I don't make difficult. it difficult because okay. here's the thing. Yes. If, if I forget if I forget one of my if I forget one of my good friends Terry's records, he's going to be like, "Well, bitch, you didn't think of That's my records." Terry, record. honey, he's speaking about. Yeah. Okay. So, so, it, so why, don't, why don't you just ask me three of my favorite records? <sighs> because it's my show, Freddie, and I can do it. And I it's my answer. answer, and you asked me. Oh, okay. Give me Hello. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Give me three of your favorite house records. Three. Bad For Me by Dee Dee Bridgewater. Dee Dee Bridgewater. Yeah. Oh, the 12 oh, yeah. inch. Ow! Do, do, do. Okay. Um, He, uh, uh, put your body into it. Okay. And um, inch by inch. You would say that. Of course. <laughs> 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 well, that's good, Freddie. I appreciate you, man. I mean, there's so there's so much out there. It but, is. It is. But you know, those are three. three. Okay. Here's another one, another question. Then. Okay. Frankie at the warehouse playing disco, correct? We didn't call it disco. You, had, you didn't call it disco. What, what did you call it? Just dance music? music? We just called it music. Okay. So, we, we, it's, and, and that goes back into this whole title thing. Terry and I had a conversation that's Terry a, a couple of weeks ago, right. uh, about a month ago, maybe. And he kind of broke it down to me and, and kind of kind of schooled me on, right. on timelines and stuff. Yeah. And so, um, Again, I, I we never called it anything. We 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 never put a title to it. We just listened to it. We just said, "Oh, have you heard that new record? Have you heard?" Right. A- and 
in retrospect, like bad luck uh, or, or either um, Philadelphia, anything by Philadelphia right. International. So the album versions became 12 inch versions, and that's what we danced to. Okay. So we didn't give it a title. We didn't. Right. We didn't put anything on it. So hanging with Frankie, did Frankie ever tell you like what was one of his all time favorite records or anything like that? That he loved to play. Like he'd be like, "I gotta play this. This is in rotation every single time." I, I think a good go to record for him was "Love Is the Message." Who oh, who who yeah. doesn't love "Love Is yeah. the Message"? Yeah, yeah. Um, and another one of my fa- my favorite tunes is Girl, You Need to Change Your Mind, the album version. Oh. <laughs> okay, once again, thank you so much, Freddie, for doing this. You get everything you want? I get everything I want. I really appreciate it. Thank you for doing this once again. I love you. Love you right back. I appreciate you. I appreciate and you, like and I thank said, you for the know- opportunity to set some bitches to correct. <laughs> Absolutely. Bye. Bye. <laughs>